seem like you're a god. Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Maisha Chantel. But if you are returning, you're an OG. You are officially a part of the family. What's good in the hood? But if you want to become a part of the notification game, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment below, and turn on your post notifications so you'll stay up to date. And lastly, follow me on my personal Instagram because it's live and I only have 672 followers. And so y'all need to go uh, light up your girl Instagram. Let me let me just scroll right quick. Do you see? This is this is me on Instagram. This is me. I'm giving you bad bitch vibes. I'm giving you life. I'm giving you whatever you want to think. I'm giving you. I'm giving it to you. So follow me on my Instagram, okay? But. <laughs> I'm back at it again with another MPHC tea talk, y'all. Yo, I just really want y'all to know that I fucks with the support so much because y'all really supported your girl on her last MPHC tea talk video of how to write a good letter of interest to that organization. Like, let me let me just go look right now. Let me go. That video has over a thousand views already and it's only been up for 10 days. That's crazy. I was not expecting that. And 58 people liked the video. So I fucks with y'all. Excuse my language. The little ghetto-ness came out of me just now. I'm just like super excited because like the support is unreal for you, girl. But I did take a poll on my YouTube channel of when you guys would like for me to drop MPHC Tea Talk videos. And guess what happened? I'll be dropping an MPHC Tea Talk video every Sunday at 10 p.m. Faithfully, because that's, that is what one, four times a month instead of one time a month or sometimes like five Sundays in a month. So you will be getting a video every Sunday from your girl on MPHC Tea Talks. With that being said, y'all got to be active in my comment section. Y'all got to let me know topics that you guys want me to discuss. You guys got to let me know if you have any questions. Don't be afraid to ask them in the comment section. Like, drop them below. I'll make a whole video about it. Like, I don't open book. I don't be caring. I care to understand, but at the same time, I don't care. Like, whatever y'all want to know, I got y'all. I'll spill the real tea, okay? So, you know how you have to have a good interest letter? You gotta have good recommendation letters as well. You don't wanna have no whack recommendation letters at all because that organization not gonna go, go for it. Hold on, wait, peep the shirt. It said, did you sacrifice or just pay the price? <laughs> I'm going to let y'all think about that for a second. So, for my application, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we had to have three letters of recommendation. Uh, yeah, it was three letters. Um, one of the letters of recommendation was from a director of an organization that I was a part of. And then two of the other recommendation letters were from current and active members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. So I would highly suggest make sure that you get at least one recommendation letter from an active member of that particular organization that you want to join. And what I mean by active, I mean financially active. Like they're paying their dues, they're active in that organization. Because you don't want to get a recommendation letter from someone who is inactive, someone who was suspended, someone who was expelled or no longer a part that a part of that organization cuz honestly, you got to ask that question. You got to be like, "Hey, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but are you financially active in this organization?" Or are you currently suspended or have you ever been suspended from this particular organization don't be afraid to ask those questions because honestly 
your letters of recommendation matters and who they're from. One of them, well, both of them were active financially from the organization. One was she was actually ahead of um, student life for my school. And so that was good that I got it from her. And the second um, letter of recommendation that I got from an active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, she was actually a soror. Well, at the moment, she wasn't a soror, but she was a close friend of mine that um, pledged at another school. And she is actually the one that helped me with my application. She wrote the recommendation letter for me. It was amazing. And then the third recommendation letter I got was from a director of a student organization that I was a part of. And it was amazing. He said highly things of me. And that's another thing when you get your letters of recommendation is make sure you know that individual person is going to speak so highly of you. They're going to put you on a pedestal. They're going to make you make it seem like you're a god. You don't want to get a recommendation letter from someone who is going to make you seem mediocre. That's a no-go. And crazy part, all three of them letters, letters of recommendation, they let me proofread it. They let me... If I didn't like it, they let me change it and they just signed it. That's the crazy part about it. That's what I mean. You got to get recommendation letters from people who really want you to become a part of their organization. Because honestly, some letters of recommendation, they do not let you see it. And it could be trash and it could set you up for failure. Don't be afraid to ask, can you read it? Yeah, you got to be honest with these people when they giving you these letters. Like you, you need to be like, no offense, can I read this? Like, and a lot of people sometimes they'll let you write the letter of recommendation yourself, and they'll just sign it and seal it in an envelope with your application. So typically, it's a win-win situation. But you definitely have to get at least one letter of recommendation from someone in that particular organization that you want to join. I will try to get a letter of re recommendation from someone who is very, very high positioned on your campus, um, directors of programs. You can get it from a professor, but you gotta make sure that they speak highly of you because you, like I said before, you don't want someone who's not going to speak highly of you like you're a god or like a goddess or you like you're up here like even if they're over exaggerating you want them to do that because it makes you look good even better so that's definitely and you want to get these letter letters of recommendation early like don't if i know it's kind of maybe naive to say this but if you know an organization comes um, comes out with a line typically every year, every spring semester, make sure try to get a letters of recommendation that fall semester. Or if you know that you have a really good chance, like a ninety five percent chance of getting selected into that organization, get your letters of recommendation early. Like it doesn't hurt. You just have to keep them in a sealed envelope. They can't be open. That's the only thing. Um, but yes, so takeaway from this video is definitely make sure you get a letter of recommendation from a current and active member of that organization. And when I mean active, I mean financially. Ask that question. Another, um, tip is another takeaway is make sure you proofread the letter of recommendation before they seal it on the envelope ask them can you proofread it it shouldn't be an issue number three ask people who are in high positions on campus that will be able to speak highly of you those really are the three main points of how to get a good letter of recommendation or how to get recommendation letters from people.
and who I think you should get recommendation letters from. So if you guys like this video, just make sure you give it a thumbs up. If, uh, if you want me to cover other topics, just make sure you comment that below as well. And I think that's it. But also, y'all, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow my personal Instagram, turn on your post notifications so you'll stay up to date whenever I post. And lastly, I'll be posting MPHC T Talk videos only on Sunday at 10 p.m. Thank you guys for tuning in, and y'all will see me next Sunday.